Someone detonated a nuclear bomb, and nobody knows for sure who it was. Somewhere between Africa and Antarctica, there was a massive nuclear explosion. The problem, no one was supposed to be testing nuclear weapons at that time, and even more puzzling, the US had no idea who was behind it. Today, we're taking a look at the incredible Vila incident. Make sure to stick around until the end. I promise you, this is going to blow your mind. Welcome, everyone. A massive nuclear explosion shakes the ocean, and the perpetrator is unknown. If you always want to be informed about such fascinating stories, then go ahead and subscribe right now. Subscribing doesn't cost anything at all. You'll never miss a video again, and you'll be helping me out. If you've already subscribed, you can support the video with a thumbs up. Maybe we can hit 5,000 likes, then YouTube will show the video to even more people. But now, let's get to our nuclear mystery. To understand why the mysterious nuclear test we are talking about today was so controversial, we first need to go back to the Cold War era. In the 1960s, the US launched a top secret satellite program called Vela. These satellites had a single mission, to detect nuclear weapons tests anywhere in the world. Between 1963 and 1970, 12 of these high-tech surveillance satellites were launched into space. A kind of cosmic atomic police force, if you will. The reason for this elaborate surveillance was the Partial Nuclear Test Ban Treaty of 1963. The USA, Great Britain, and the Soviet Union had agreed not to test nuclear weapons in the atmosphere, underwater, or in space anymore. Underground tests were still allowed, but everything else was off-limits. The Vela satellites were meant to make sure everyone stuck to the rules, and these satellites were really good at their job. They were equipped with so-called bang meters. I swear, that's really what they're called. These optical sensors could clearly identify the characteristic double flash signature of a nuclear explosion. When a nuclear bomb goes off, it first produces an extremely bright flash of light. Then the fireball cools down a bit and produces a second, longer flash of light. This pattern is as unique as a fingerprint, but of course, much more energetic. By 1979, the Vela satellites had detected 41 atmospheric nuclear tests. All of them were carried out by France or China, which had not signed the Test Ban Treaty. The sensors had never triggered a false alarm before. Until that fateful September day on September 22, 1979, at exactly 12.53 am local time, the Vela 6911 satellite registered the characteristic double flash signal of a nuclear explosion. Within minutes, alarm bells were ringing at Patrick Air Force Base in Florida. Technicians downloaded and analyzed the satellite data, and what they saw was clearly the signature of a nuclear detonation. By triangulating with other monitoring stations, the Americans were able to quickly determine the approximate coordinates. 47 degrees south, 40 degrees east. This placed the explosion in the middle of the Indian Ocean between the Crozier Islands, which belonged to France, and the South African Prince Edward Islands. And from here on, the story gets really mysterious. President Jimmy Carter noted in his diary that the test might have been carried out from a ship. But which country would risk conducting an illegal nuclear test and possibly triggering World War III? Before we get to the bottom of this, go ahead and write your guess in the comments. Which country secretly detonated a nuclear bomb? I'm very curious to hear your guesses. At first, one might think of France, but that could be ruled out. The French had a perfectly equipped test site on the Mururoa Atoll, where they had been conducting all their tests in deep underground shafts since 1975. Besides, this place was over 7,000 kilometers away from their own Crozet Islands. Why would they travel so far? South Africa seemed more suspicious. But the motives became more interesting. In 1979, South Africa, then still under apartheid, was fighting a bitter war against Angola, where 36,000 Cuban soldiers were stationed. A successful nuclear weapons test would have sent a clear message. Take another step south and see what happens. And South Africa had already tried to test nuclear weapons before. In 1977, the CIA caught the country secretly digging a huge test shaft in the Kalahari Desert. President Carter complained and the drilling was stopped. This may have forced South Africa to look for other testing options. For example, out on the open sea, but the story gets even more complicated because South Africa had a secret partner. 
Israel. Both countries were close allies in the 70s. Both were apparently working secretly on nuclear weapons. And this is where it gets really interesting. South Africa had the raw materials, large uranium deposits, and the necessary quantity for enrichment, while Israel had the technical know-how to build nuclear weapons. In 2010, secret South African documents were released proving that Israel had offered to sell nuclear weapons to South Africa in 1975. They even signed a secret agreement codenamed Segman. However, the most explosive evidence comes from Dieter Gerhardt, a convicted spy for the Soviet Union who was commander of the Simonstown naval base in South Africa at the time of the Vela incident. After his release from prison in 1994, he said, The flash was caused by an Israeli-South African test codenamed Operation Phoenix. The explosion was clean and was not supposed to be detected, but it was not as clever as planned and the weather changed so the Americans noticed it. You might be thinking, wait a minute, maybe the satellites made a mistake. After all, even the best sensors aren't infallible, but the data is pretty clear. Vela 6911 was not only equipped with optical sensors, but also with gamma, x-ray and neutron detectors, all of which lit up simultaneously like a flashing Christmas tree. In addition, secret US Navy microphones recorded hydroacoustic signals indicating a nuclear explosion on the sea surface. Now comes the, let's say, truly interesting part of the story. When the Carter administration realized what might have happened, they formed an investigative committee made up of eight leading scientists. This was called the Rayner Panel, named after the MIT engineer Jack Rayner. And here, something very strange was done. The panel was tasked with only investigating whether the double flash could have been a natural phenomenon, not who had carried out the test. Even stranger, the scientists were denied access to key intelligence information. They were not allowed to see the hydroacoustic recordings or any other evidence that could point to the perpetrator. In 1980, the Rayner panel concluded that the Vela incident was probably not caused by a nuclear explosion, but by a meteorite that may have hit the satellite. That's a pretty bold claim, considering that the same satellites had previously correctly identified 41 confirmed nuclear tests without ever triggering a false alarm. Why this cover-up? The answer lies in geopolitics. The US probably did not want to publicly accuse either Israel or South Africa of conducting illegal nuclear tests. Despite all the tensions, both were important allies for the US in a complex global situation. Incidentally, this is a pattern that runs throughout history. Sometimes political considerations are more important than the plain truth. According to the motto, you don't snitch on your friends. It's a principle we learn on the schoolyard, and apparently, it also applies in world politics. Today, more than 40 years later, the Whaler incident is still officially unresolved. The CIA studies from the days and weeks following the event are still classified, but the evidence speaks for itself. In September 1979, someone most likely detonated a nuclear bomb, and it's almost certain that the American intelligence agencies know who it was. That reminds me of a quote from Otto von Bismarck, slightly adapted, politics is like sausage, you'd be better off not being there when it's made. If you don't want to miss more exciting news, make sure to subscribe to the channel now and don't forget to give us a thumbs up so we can hit 5,000 likes. And now, let's travel from our Earth out into the cosmos. Physicists have found evidence suggesting that our universe might be inside a black hole. No joke. This theory has been around for a while, but new data from the James Webb Telescope could now provide the proof. You can find everything about it and a proper cosmic identity crisis in the video shown at the top right. Be sure to click on it. And if you click on the bottom right, you'll find another exciting video about space and science. Otherwise, I'd say see you in the next video. Take care, everyone.